The word that I'll be sharing with you tonight, the Lord laid on my heart about a year ago, even before knowing I'll be preaching here. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said that this will be the foundation of my message as a forerunner, as a messenger for the Lord. And it all started with a vision that I saw one night when we were here for prophetic and we prayed for a beloved brother of ours who was in desperate need. And I saw a vision regarding his life, but also my personal life and actually the lives of, of every believer. So the vision, what happened was I saw a woman laying on a, on a red couch and her head was laying on the armrest with her hair down to the floor, almost touching the floor with beautiful blonde hair. After a period of time, someone came in with a pair of scissors and then cut her hair. After the hair was cut, she fell to the floor. Her body became weak, wrinkled, fragile. And she started to, to crawl around in the room in search of something. And she crawled to the front of, of me and she looked up straight into my eyes. I could see there was deep hurting, sadness within her. And on her forehead stood truth. Let us pray. Lord, you are good. And I ask that you will touch my lips tonight, Lord. With your coals of fire, my inner being, Lord. I'm a vessel for you. And I pray, Lord, that I will only speak that which I receive from you. So Lord, would you move with your spirit, with your truth. Will you open up our eyes so that we may know the truth, Lord, that we will understand the value of it and that we will be brought out to fight for truth to prevail, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So beloved, this woman who was laying on the couch, I knew represented the body of Christ, each believer, those of the faith. And uh, she had the ability to, to lay on the fullness of the couch, but she herself chose not to do so. Me and you are the believers we sometimes choose to, to not lay on the fullness of the couch. And this couch represents the blood of Christ, the dealings of the cross, what he did for us. And when we do so, when we choose to not place the fullness of our being through the workings of the cross in the blood of Jesus Christ, we set ourselves open vulnerable for an attack, but we only not cause ourselves to be attacked or be vulnerable for an attack, but we also cause ourselves to be unable to walk in the fullness of the calling that Jesus Christ called us to walk in. Let us read from John 8, verse 44 to 45. You are of your father, the devil, and the desire of your father he wanted to, to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him, own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. We all know the story of the fall. God created Adam and Eve, gave them a, a specific command not from not to eat from the the tree of good and evil. And they disobeyed God. They rebelled against him. And there where they were placed in a garden supposed to, to rule, to stand in authority by the name of God. 
they then gave their authority, their rulership over to Satan. And uh, we can see in today's time, same one who lied to Adam and Eve has caused so many havoc in the world, in our community. We sometimes think that the work of, of the enemy is, is always these big things. But it can be as subtle as a lie. We all know the power of a lie. We have experienced lies in our life and we can see the danger and how it destroys our world. We can see it between nations, if we look at Russia, Ukraine. We can see it within our nation, in our government, but it gets closer to that. It hits our family, our friends, so it becomes personal. But it gets closer to that. It hits the body of Christ. Each believer, you and I. Beloved, we were born under the rulership of Satan. But luckily, we were born by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are grafted into a new family. We are called out of the old family into the new. But with the lies and the deceit that Satan sows, there's something that we can see, that there is power in a lie. But we know that Satan takes what is godly and he turns it around. He makes it dark. So we can understand that there's power in truth. So our mission then is to, to understand what is truth so that we can know and also walk in it and fight for its prevail. Let us read from John 14, verse 15 to 18. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you an orphan. I will come to you. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Therein we can have confidence in our testimony in Jesus Christ. So we no longer have to walk in the ways of the father of lies. He isn't our father. My personal testimony, I was in, in another family than this family. So I can understand a bit of it, to leave the, the things of the old family and being rooted into a new one, setting my heart and my ways on the ways of the new family. We have a new father. Father is all about truth because he is the God of truth. He is truth. Psalms 31 verse five says, in your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Deuteronomy 32 verse four, he is the rock, his working is perfect. For all his ways are just, a God of truth and without injustice, 
righteous and upright is he. Jesus came to the earth 2,000 years ago for you and I to be bought, to become his bride, to be grafted into the new family, to take back the authority that was given to Satan that was lost in the fall. Zechariah 8 verse 3 says, Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Jesus is returning to establish his kingdom, his rulership on earth, and he will not work alone. He will rule, he will reign with his bride. And he says that his city, Jerusalem, will be called the city of truth. So we can understand that the citizens that will live within Jerusalem, you and I, are called a people of truth. And the king that will rule and reign is the truth. will judge according to his truth and not ours. I was born in a generation where we as youth, teenagers, think that we know best, we have it all, and we disregard the wisdom from our elders. My mother and my father can confess of that. I was guilty and I'm still guilty of it. But the thing is, it's grafted into humanity. We can see that it has become normal in saying that you have your truth and I have my truth. And you follow your truth and that's good. I will not convict you. It's good. Don't judge. And I have my truth. And I will follow my truth. I will believe my truth. And you dare not judge my truth. And we can see that there isn't unity. If you can believe something, something different than mine, if I can believe something that's different than yours, just as Russia and Ukraine, how can we stand in unity if it's quite the opposite? You can see that there's war breaking out, fight, fights between families, because truth do not prevail, because there's supposed to be one truth. And this bride that Jesus will be returning to will stand for one truth, the truth of the Lord. The truth that he speaks, that he rules by, that he judges by. So then if this kingdom works by truth, then we should fight to attain truth then, to get truth, to buy truth. Because if we do not do so, we will be those falling on the floor, breaking the power of truth in our lives. We will crawl around in search of something, the very thing that, that keeps us on the way, that keeps us in the calling that the Lord has called us to walk in. 
we become blind of our ways. We become blind of the call of the Lord, his voice luring us in, into the truth because he wants his truth to manifest within his bride. And we get hurt. We get hurt through experiences, traumas, because of our choices. And sadness and bitterness creeps up in our hearts because we have lost something, the truth. Jesus said he will be returning for a glorious bride. I don't know about you, crawling around on the floor, being blind, being weak, that doesn't sound glorious to me. So we need to be connected to the spirit of truth. Let's read from John 16, verse 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So through the scripture we read that the spirit of truth will guide us into all truth. And he will receive what is Jesus's, his truth, and he will give it to us. So what is truth then? We can understand from the scripture that Jesus says that he is the truth. If he is the person who has hold of truth, he is in rulership of truth. John 14 verse six says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus makes it clear. He is the way, the truth and the life. So when we follow Jesus, we need to receive the truth. And here is a commandment. It's not something that we can choose. Because he says that he is the life as well. So we need to lay hold of truth. So that we can receive life. You and I received truth before we made the choice to, to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we chose to say yes for his call, his voice, to become part of the new family, and therefore received life. But there's more than that to life. Proverbs 23, verse 23 says, Buy the truth and do not sell it. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. We are to buy the truth. And we do so by selling lies. We are not allowed to sell truth, but to lay hold of that truth, it costs us something. It costs us ourselves to lay ourselves down. Daily we are in a battle, in a decision making of buying truth every choice, every thought, every word, every action. So how do we buy truth? Romans 12 verse two says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are washed by the blood of God, a new creation, 
but our souls and our bodies are still in the process of becoming new. And this is why Romans say that we should renew our mind. Renew our mind from the, the former things of the former family, the old family, where our father was the father of lies. So we need to fight to expose those lies and allow God to demolish those lies, those strongholds. Psalm 86, Lord, I will walk in your truth, unite my heart to fear your name. You can understand here that there's a call from a place of a heart that is teachable to walk in the truth of God we need to have a teachable spirit a teachable spirit opens up the door to receive the truth and cause us to walk in it we are a new creation but we are not perfect the Lord God is almighty, who has all wisdom, all understanding, who is holy. And we are called to become like him. So ultimately he is our teacher and he will lead us and help us into becoming like him. So we need to, to understand that the perfect God needs to teach us. So we need to be open up before him and allow him to expose. And we cannot tell him that he's wrong, that our truth we rather prefer. And ultimately how the process works, we read in Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and without blemish. So this isn't about husbands and wives and the physical but us being a bride to the bridegroom. And he says that he is committed towards us and he wants a glorious church and he will have a glorious church and he will do so by the cleansing of the waters of his word. John 17 verse 17 says, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. Again, we hear the word of the Lord needs to wash us because it's the truth. John 8, verse 31 to 32. Then he said to those Jews who believe in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Again, if you abide in my word, you will come to know the truth you will experience the truth and understand it and it will set you free. And you might think it costs to lay myself down and I don't wanna do that. I'm comfortable where I am. Life is good. But I wanna tell you that there's some benefits in walking in truth, gaining truth. The first, in Proverbs 12, verse 17 to 22, he who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is in one who speaks like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. The seat is in the heart of those who devise evil but counselors of peace have joy. 
No grave trouble will overtake the righteous, but the wicked shall be filled with evil. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. So truth and its dealings bring delight in the heart of God. God lay, uh, hate lies because it brings deceit and hurt. But there is much joy in the Lord when we come to know the truth, walk in the truth, but also declare the truth, allowing that which is spoken from our mouths to be truthful. Another benefit of his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. The truth of God becomes our shield. The protection that we get against the onslaughts of the enemy. Again, standing in truth, allowing our full capacity to be laid within the the body of Christ, his blood, we're not vulnerable anymore. His truth is a buckler. I had an opportunity to go with, with Pierre, where he ministered to, to children, where he shared the, the word of the armor of God. When it came to the buckler, he said, we need it, otherwise our pants fall off. So funny, but it's so true. If we sell truth, we cause our pants to fall down. We struggle to walk. We struggle to, to run the good race. Another, John 8, 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who, be, uh, who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and sh you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. By knowing the truth, chains get broken. We receive freedom freedom from the bondages, from the old family. Jeremiah 4 verse 2, and you shall swear the Lord lives in truth, in justice, and in righteousness. The nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. When we walk in truth, we get blessed. We can walk in glory because of God and his truth. This is a glorious bride, which I understand from. Psalm 40, verse 11. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your love, kindness, and your truth continuously preserve me. Truth preserves us. It keeps us steady. It causes us not to, to fall on the ground as the women in the vision did. Crawl around hopelessly, powerless, in search of truth and the workings of God being hurtful and saddened. Psalm 43 verse three. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Truth draws us into the presence of God. Truth also draws us into worship. That's why we are here. 
to be in the presence of God, to experience him, to have an encounter with him, so that he will touch us and that we will be a, of good essence before the Lord. If we deny the truth of God, of Jesus, who is the truth, how can we move in his presence then if we deny him? Because that's ultimately what happens. When we deny the workings of the spirit of truth who shares Jesus with us, we deny Jesus. And we can only move in worship when we have a revelation in the truth. John 14 verse 6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When we lay hold of Jesus, who is the truth, allow him to wash us by the word, our eyes get opened and we can see the Father. But we also receive life. You and I, who are called to be a glorious bride, are called to life, uh, have a life in abundance. So we need to, to walk in truth even more, allow, allowing ourselves to move into the presence of God, worshiping Him, allowing Him to, to wash us so that we can understand even more what life means in Jesus Christ. And that will set us up to, to understand what is available to us. But it will also give us strength to walk out which he has called us. As I shared that there's benefits, there's also danger. Romans 1 verse 24 to 25, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their heart, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The Lord warns us, if we keep walking in the lies, and we do not listen to his truth, he will give us over to the lust of our flesh. He will give us over to be powerless, to crawl around on the floor, to be blind. That's not where he wants us. That's why he keeps on speaking his truth over us. Psalm 96 Verse 10, say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. He shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. He will reign and rule by his truth and his truth alone. He will judge everything that is in the line and remove it. We read in Ephesians 5, verse 8 to 9. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So if you and I want to, to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, in love, patience, etc., we need to lay hold of truth because it's the soil for these fruits to grow in. Our theme for the year is a garden enclosed. We aim to become purified, to give a good harvest of ourselves to the Lord because he is worthy of it. We want good fruits to be shown to the Lord and truth will be necessary for us to grow in it. We do not have a choice Beloved, 
to take truth or leave it. It's a commandment from the Lord. We either get the choice to, to take the grace from the Lord and walk in it, or he will shake us in time to come. I want us to pray Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5 together. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Open up your heart. Understand that you need a teachable spirit. Ask the Lord to, to captivate your heart to be teachable so that the spirit of truth may guide you into all truth and that he will cause you to be empowered by the grace and the love of God so that you can become a glorious bride because he's waiting for you to become glorious. He wants you to be glorious. Let us pray. O oh Lord, thank you for your truth that we are in a new family with a new father, father of truth. We captivate our hearts by your spirit of truth We open up our hearts to you. And would you open up our eyes to see the strongholds that the enemy created within us, which we accepted, allowed to grow within us. And we give you permission, Spirit of Truth, to remove these strongholds because we want to be guided in all truth. We want to walk in all truth. We do not want to be powerless because you are not a God of powerless people. You are a God of a, a glorious bride, a powerful bride. Amen. Adrian, will you come up for us? There's a few minutes left and I want you to spend time with the Lord, with the spirit of truth and ask him in your own way to expose the lies, the strongholds, the hurtings because of the, the father of lies. Do you speak to God? Would you repent? Ask for forgiveness? And establish your heart in the new ways of the new family. To say yes, to walk in truth, in all truth. And I also want to invite the staff and the students to come to the front. If you're in need of prayer, if you're in need of guidance, come to a brother, come to a sister that will help you.